Daily go get him show all up in your area. It's finally Friday. Friday. Sometimes it seems like it's a long time coming, but it will come. It will get there. And it is here now. We have made it. Friday all up in your area. Daily go get him show. And tonight on the Daily go get him show, we are talking about securing your emotional perimeter. Securing your emotional perimeter. What do you know? What do y'all know about securing your emotional perimeter? What are the things that people do in order to secure their emotional perimeter? Now, let me explain to you what I mean by securing your emotional perimeter. First of all, let me define emotional perimeter. Your emotional perimeter uh, are the things that surround you, the things that are around you, your environment around you that affects the way that you feel. Your emotions, the things that make you happy, the things that make you sad, the things that make you make you angry, the things that concern you, the things that make you curious, you know, the things that 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 jar the way that you feel about things, the things that change how you feel about the day that you are spending or the time that you are spending with and around anyone. So you know how there are things that happen in our lives that affect us. They affect us emotionally. They are things that we see, hear, touch, and feel that that change how how the outlook of our day may be. You know, we're talking when we talk about our emotions, we're not just talking about being sad. We're not just talking about, you know, breaking down and crying, shedding tears and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about the way that we feel. And you know, with with with, with us being in the internet age and all of that kind of stuff, we are in the position to have access to all types of information that we would not have gotten in the way that we get any at any other times in our lives so you know sometimes sometimes having access to the internet is like watching the news all day and you know how you may be the type of person that watches the local news and you know everything that's going on around you and that may be important to you you know how it is you know you you want to know what's going on in your old neighborhood and surrounding and surrounding neighborhoods or or cities, towns, things that are going on in the state, things that are going on in the country, in the world, or whatever. You want to stay abreast of of what's happening with you. That may be how you feel about about information in the information age. For other people, they may choose to um, close themselves off to the local news (coughs) or the news in in and of itself because they may feel like it fills our heads up with a bunch of negativity and propaganda and it may make it hard harder to distinguish what is the truth what are lies and things like that and that's an understandable position it's an understandable position to have <laughs> nobody wants to um compromise compromise their good feelings about every day we have to be able to arm ourselves to be able to stand in front of of um of each day that we have to face. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? So, when we talk about securing our emotional per- perimeter, like I said, some people may watch the news all day. You know how you may have a senior citizen in your life that watches the news all day. They know everything that's going on. You know how some people some 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 kind of tragedy will happen that they expect everybody to know about and they and let's say all right in the neighborhood that i live in if a crime happens in this neighborhood you know people might be like yo yo oh you good you everything cool you know we heard about that shooting over there or that fire that was over there or whatever happened over there you know what i'm saying like uh you and sometimes i won't even know about it unless it's right there right right around me to be able to see I might not know about it, but I'm definitely not going to know about it by watching the local news because I don't watch the local news. Now, I don't avoid watching the local news because because um, I can't stand it. I never really like watching the news. Never, never, ever, 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 ever. I never really like watching it. You know, like it's an informational tool and it's cool. Um, it used to let me know if I had to go to school the next day. What? um barring weather conditions and stuff like that but other than that i've never been like a fan of the the local news or whatever but i do watch national and international political news stuff like that interests me more than 
uh, they this this many people had a fire, died in a fire, or you know got shot, or um, they're honoring this and that and this. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I guess the way that I may secure my emotional perimeter might be different than a lot of, than the way that a lot of other people secure theirs. Um, but that's what your emotional perimeter is. It's the things that you surround yourself with that will determine how you feel about your life, about life in general, <clears throat> and the way that you can go about living your life on each and every particular day. So that's what we talk about tonight on the Daily Go Get Emism show tonight. Like, I don't want to be around a bunch of negative people. I don't want to be around a bunch of toxic people. Toxic people got to get out of my life. We hear this kind of stuff on the internet all the time. We hear this kind of stuff on the internet all the time. Like, listen, man, you know, I can't, um, you know, these people that's on my timeline, I got to get rid of these Trump supporters. I got to block them. I got to delete them. I got to get rid of them because they talking all this whole crazy stuff. And I don't, I don't understand how people can support somebody like that or Joe Biden. I don't see how people can support something like that. Or Obama, I don't see how people can support someone like that or whatever. These people are blind, deaf, and dumb. They ain't woke. They ain't, they, they still sleep. I can't deal with it. And maybe listening to uh, different opinions by other people might put you in a state where you feel like you need to secure your emotional perimeter. Like, I can't listen to these cats talk about politics all day. Or I can't listen to these cats um, um, make it seem like it's okay, okay to be transgender. Or I can't believe that these these cats um, oppose abortion or or support abortion and whatever. How can you kill these babies? And, and for a lot of people, having different opinions than them really, really pokes at their spirit. Like they don't like it. Like I don't, don't want to be around nobody who even who who supports some 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 someone or something like that. <clears throat> so they might secure their emotional perimeter by removing people from their social media or or from their ability to be able to see, hear, or be influenced by people who differ in the way that they feel. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, T. Carrie? Right, morning, noon, and night. It's always great to have my peoples going directly into your site and my brother from another mother, Norris Hill. Sit back, relax, do your thing, Max, and chill. And naturally, the rap. Thanks for coming through. What's the hats? Uh, thanks for coming through, Slap. What's going on? How y'all feeling? So we're talking about securing your emotional perimeter. How do y'all secure your emotional perimeter? What do you surround yourself with? But And, and let me say this. And I should have said this more in the description. All right. Securing your emotional um, perimeter might be arming yourself or protecting yourself against negativity. Or it might be strengthening yourself to be able to stand up against negativity. I want to make sure I add that. Your emotional perimeter is one thing. What you do about securing your emotional perimeter is either protection, defense, or I guess, you, well, I guess you could say protection or defense. You know, I never really thought about it before, but I guess there, there, there is or can be a difference between protecting yourself and defending yourself. When I'm protecting myself, I could just be blocking. I'm playing defense. You know, I'm stopping you from getting in. Defending myself could also mean being more aggressive, getting on offense. Hmm. Let me make sure that I'm correct in that. What do y'all think about that? Is it, it is, is it a difference to y'all between protecting yourself and defending yourself? Like if somebody comes up against me 
and tries to hurt me or harm me, I have the right to protect myself. But I might feel like I have to defend myself proactively even before there are threats there. So defending myself or creating a defense might be actually, you know, exercising, doing drills, um, practice, practicing self-defense techniques and employing them in order to be able to not only withstand an attack, but to be able to attack in my own right. But let me know what y'all think. Shirley Cheryl, the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. Shirley Cheryl, the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. What's going on? My ha 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 ha. How is you feeling? Good to see some of you. I said, how is you feeling? A good to good to good to good to see me some of you. We're talking about securing your emotional uh, perimeter tonight. Tonight on the Daily Go Get Emism Show. Make sure y'all hit that like button though. <clears throat> Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is the Daily Go Get Emism Show. Yeah, and it's Friday night. And even though this week went fast, and I think every, I think uh, when you get to a certain age, life starts to really, really uh, speed up on you. Some people feel some kind of way about that. Um, I've chosen. I've chosen not to look at it in a negative way. I've cho I've chosen not to look at it as getting older and having to face my mortality. I've chosen to look at it more from the standpoint of this will allow me to get to the bag faster. This will allow me to get to the bag faster. So I'm securing my emotional perimeter in that way. Instead of looking at it like, damn, man, I'm getting older. You know, I'm not a young boy no more. You know, I got to face these aches and pains and not being able to recover from, from, from uh, injuries like as fast as I used to be able to. Instead of looking at it that way, I've chosen to look at it like the greater things that I've always wanted in my life, I'll be able to get to them faster. So when I want to make, when I want to make some money, these, these weeks are going by faster. So I'm going to get to this money faster. When I'm, when I want new ideas, when I want to learn something, if I want to get, go back to school, get my degree. Yeah. These weeks going fast will make it, make it beneficial for me because maybe the, the year seeming like it's only being, being a half a year will allow me to get my degree faster, will allow me to learn faster, will allow me to get better faster. So that's a way of viewing things that might allow you to secure your emotional perimeter. Do you understand what I'm talking about, about right now? Personally, I'm securing my emotional perimeter by just looking forward to tomorrow and Sunday because I need to be off, nigga. I need to be. I need to get some rest. I haven't slept that well this week. I don't know if y'all have, but I know I have not. And I I need better in my life. You know, I need better. I got to I got to get more rest. Um and I need to get to be around people or things that make me feel better in my life. So I need to secure my emotional perimeter. One thing about one thing about my space is that um like I like my career but I don't love my job. That might put me in the same category with a lot of people. Like I like what I do but I'm I don't really like the people that I do it with. That sort of thing. Like they I right, but they, they are definitely, like, if I had to sketch up the people that I would get money with, I would get money with my peoples. I would build with my with my loved ones. I would, I would get money and build our communities and strengthen our education system and our familial structure 
with those that I care about. I would do it with people that I'm personally invested in. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I haven't had the luxury or the privilege of working with people that I really, really would kick it with after the school bell rings. Don't look at it as sad because I don't look at it as sad, but it's a reality for me. So, so um, when the school bell rings for me, after I, you know, drive out of the parking lot, you know, loudly screaming over my music, fuck all y'all, fuck all y'all, ha <laughs> ha. Oh, damn, speed bumps in the damn, um, speed bumps coming out of the damn um, parking lot. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck out of here. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> Pussy. So, I'm looking forward this weekend to doing things that I like. Being around only, only people that I like. So, that's how I... That's that's how I'm going to secure my emotional perimeter tonight. What y'all, I mean, this weekend, I should say. What about y'all? What are y'all doing? What do you do? What techniques do you employ in order to secure your, your emotional perimeter? Your emotional perimeter. How do you do it? How do you secure your emotional perimeter? T. Carry Wright. My brother from another mother, Norris Hill, naturalista rap, and surely Cheryl, the world's most precious and the greatest pearl in the world. How, how, how now, brown cow, do you secure your emotional perimeter? What y'all got for me? Let me hear something. What you got for me? Let me hear something. All right. Natural release of the rap says, no difference to me. Okay. No difference between protecting yourself and defending yourself. Okay. G. Carey Wright says, protection is a form of defense. Okay. All right. Brother from another mother, Norris Hill says, I'm feeling some kind of way about a brick being being on the accelerator of life. I can't wait until I can't wait till the B Day shout outs. My grandson is four already. I hear that. <clears throat> I hear that, man. I do. And it ain't, you know, I, I, I'm I'm on your side. It ain't easy. It ain't, you know, like. In in 2020, when I when I turned 50, I was like, I wasn't feeling great about it. But it's like, for me, I do well with situations I can't do nothing about. And that's because I can't do nothing about it. The things I struggle with are the things that I can do things about. Or that I can do something about, but may have obstacles that are blocking me from being able to get out there and make things the way I want them to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, because I knew that turning 50 years old and I'll be 53 this year. I knew that it was like, it was sink or swim. No, nigga, you can never be a young boy again. You can't do that. So that's not what the rest of your life is going to be. So that that young boy, oh, that boy, the young boy, oh, that ain't you no more. You the old head. You're not an old man, but you the old head. You got to show these babies. You got to. You got to show them a, the, the way. You have to be, you have to set an example. You have to be an example for them. There's no no other way. The same way that as you were coming up, you were asking for the old heads to set a decent example for you and those, those who were around you. 
Now that has to be you. It was you back then. It's going to be even more you now. Because now people will listen to the, the words that you say. Either that or they, or they will totally discredit the things that you say because they'll look at what you've done. Well, how are you going to tell me what I should be doing? What you got? What you doing? What, what, what have you been doing with yourself? That's what that's what we're looking at. Stacy White, how you feeling tonight? I'm glad to see you. I hope you're feeling all right. I said I'm feeling all right. Nar says. Then again, I thought I wouldn't I wouldn't be here after the diagnosis I got in 2014. Man, every day is a blessing, man. I know one thing. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad as fuck that you're here. So so bust that. And furthermore, I want to say bust that, and I also want to say hoo ha. I might even say Ruh. a bust that, a hoo ha. Maybe no, I should switch it up. Hoo ha, a bust that. Ruh. All right, y'all. Securing your emotional perimeter. Do you watch the news? Do you? When if somebody sends you a, a a friend or follow request on social media, do you accept? You know, do you do you vet people? Do you vet people in and out of your life? Do you make sure that people are doing the things that you want them to do in order to be able to stay in your life? Because you do have some control over who is in your life and who's not. You know how they say that you don't choose your family members, and you don't. But sometimes you do. You know how you choose your family members? You choose your family members by who you decide to procreate with. And you know how some people decide, some people consider themselves to be powerless in that. Man, she made me do it. She, she sure did. She made you take her phone number. She made you call her. She made you come see her. She made you take her out. She made you take a home, get her undressed, talk that good shit. You run up Anna like Bruce Jenner and shoot the place up like you was a mobster. She made you do all that. She made you tell 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 her that you loved her, that you wanted to be with her, that you you know you wanted to start a family with her. She made you do all of that. I get it. I mean, you know what I mean. She made me do the same thing. Oh, no good, manipulative, possessive, uh, uh, um, 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 calculating vermin. But yeah, we do choose our family members sometimes. And sometimes we choose our family members in the way that we decide to interact with them. But nonetheless, nonetheless, when we talk about securing our emotional perimeter, we make decisions about who we will surround ourselves with and what kind of information, what kind of energy we will surround ourselves with. You know, like I talk about my job, but I chose to work at my job. Nobody put a gun to my head and made me work there. And nobody makes me come to work every day. I choose to do that. And so when I make the, cho the choice to move on, that's on me. You know, and everybody else has that same choice. <laughs> so when we start talking about our emotional perimeter, how do you secure yours? You know, do you choose to, you know, uh, eliminate all of the negativity around you? Or do you choose to arm yourself with information so you will be able to withstand any pressure that is waged against you or, in, or any assault? T. Carry Wright says, excuse me, I vet new requests, real or imagined, all online or offline. I hear that. And I like that answer. And she also says, is it my internet or did, did it lag just now? I don't know. I can't, I can't call it. I can't call it. Narsil says. Alcohol made me do and say all those things you said on the relationship tip. Mm. 
my brother from another mother said he ended that by saying on the relationship tip on the relationship tip that is dope <laughs> <laughs> hip hop smoothed out on the r b tip with the rap feel appeal to it hip hop smoothed out on the r b tip with the rap appeal feel to it <laughs> shout out to bbd was they not the best when they was out man that first out man they was on fire Hip hop smooth out on the R and B tip with a rap feel appeal to it. TK Wright says, "I am personable, but I only let people get get but so close. I don't trust a lot of people. I like to listen more than talk because you learn more when you listen." Yeah, well, you know, you know, the old heads have to have to tell you that you learn more than you know when you listen. Maybe not you personally, but for a lot of young people, you know, I don't be trying here, nothing like you, man. You know, yo, things are different than what they used to be. Things are different than what they used to be. You know what? A lot of people who love Tupac and who remember Tupac in a fine way. One thing that Tupac didn't have in his wisdom re repertoire. And one one way that people cho choose not to to um to look at Tupac about was Tupac really believed that his generation was separated from all the generations before. Tupac did not respect his elders or his or, or the wisdom that they had. If anything, he was he was always talking about somebody is old and played out, and you know what I mean. Think about it. He ain't never say, yeah, you know my old my old head put me on. They put me up on game. Mm -mm. It was always you and me. Like where we are is is where is that? All everybody else before they old they play they played out. They ideas are old and all of that kind of shit. You know, um, people don't really look at that that part of, of, of Tupac's legacy. They want to talk about how wise he was and all of that. I'm like, no, he wasn't wise. He was smart. He wasn't wise. He, there was no wisdom. There was no wisdom. Now, if you want to talk about his, you know, talking about how his mom was in the um, in the Black Panthers and stuff like that, yeah. But Tupac was today. In the day that he was alive, he was very today. Anything that happened years before, even a year before. Mm -mm. He said, wait, so something, something. And Bill Clinton and, and Bob Dole, you're too old to know the game. You're too old, something, something, you know, the game. So you're lame. So, you know, but that's how you consider it. All right. Um, Nar says Pac was a typical 20 something. I mean, you can't tell his fans that. You cannot tell his fans nothing. You can't tell Tupac fans nothing about no Tupac. Let them tell it. Tupac was way ahead of his time. He had the plan for everything. I'm like, the plan for what? What did Tupac tell you to do that you would do that would help you, that would get you anywhere? Did he show you how to make money? Did he show you how to build families? Did he even show you loyalty? I mean, I'm just asking. Like, like listen, whenever anybody glorifies anyone else i wanted i always ask him all right so what did he give you yeah but i could feel him man he was the realest i'm like did he show you how to be real I'm like but what did he show you 
I don't want to be. I, I don't want. I hate to sound like I'm hating on him, but there's a good chance I am. Because I just want to know, like, what if you talk about if you talk about somebody like KRS One, and even though KRS One is still alive, KRS One gave you something. You know, the temple of hip hop. Your whole your whole view of what hip hop is. KRS One was very responsible for that. He built a whole school based on hip hop culture. The way that KRS One framed and developed made, and made you think about what hip hop is was different than anybody else. And he's still doing that. So you know, you can honestly say that, yo, he had activism. You know, Tupac was talking about thug life and you know your homies, this and all, and that that shit ain't doing nothing for nobody. You know, all that homie shit and all of that, that shit is either gay or it's it's showing you how to how to die young or be in jail. There ain't really that much to it. The man lived to be 25 years old. Biggie and 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 the way he lived caused Biggie to only live to be 24 years old. Both of them would be in their 50s now, but neither one of them will, will get a chance to do that. Meanwhile, all of us who witnessed what happened to both of them, yeah, we're all in our, we're, all of us now are either in our 30s, 40s, or 50s, or older, you know, but shoot. Shit was almost 30 years ago, yo. <laughs> yo. You're talking about 27 years ago for Tupac, 26 years ago for Biggie. Ain't no short time. <laughs> Naturally, the rap says he would have fit right in with today's youth. He sure would. Wild as hell. Shooting and killing each other, acting acting a fool. TK Wright says people were out here talking about him like he was Confucius. They still are. All right. So, you know what I mean, this should be amazing. I'll be like, this is a lot bigger than just thinking he was the best rapper. All right. Tupac, they talk about Tupac like he was somebody's dad, you know, who, who fought for racism and all of that. He wasn't even about that life. Anyway, okay. No, it says we, we were there in that mindset, but we saw the consequences behind Tupac's mindset from my philosophy to my, um, mama... Mama Crew? Well, wait, wait. What's that say? What does it say? I am Crew, 12, KRS-1, is still the teacher. Yeah. Huh. I am Crew? No, I am a Crew. I am a Crew. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's get back to the uh, securing your emotional perimeter. You know, you, you you have to do the things in your life that are going to make you feel better. The things that are going to make you feel good about facing each day, being able to get in the bed and feel good about the day that you just spent and being able to get up to get up tomorrow and and be able to feel good about the day that you are facing each day. But what do y'all think? What do y'all think should be done or what what do what tactics do you employ in order to arm yourself against the negativity that you don't want to experience in your life, you know, and how much does negativity affect you and your ability to be able to go on and, 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 and experience some kind of quality of life? Because at the end of the day, what we're really talking about is quality of life, quality of life. Oh, I am an MC and I'm, are you one too? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry I can't read. I am 
I am a MC. Are you one to? Oh. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know. No new friends. Some people feel like, yeah, I, I need to, I, I don't need any new friends. I'll keep my circle small. So if anybody has something to say about me, I'll know exactly where to go and find out about it from because I only, I'm only cool with a few people. I only share information with a few people. So I'll know if this gets out or that gets out, I'll know. I'll have a set number of people that I know that it came from. I keep my circle small. No new friends, baby. No new friends. That's one way to secure your emotional perimeter. Another way to secure your emotional perimeter is to, to, is to sort of make sure that you become emotionally, more emotionally tough or rigid. You know, the tough exterior. I, I let, let me let me stop playing around with this because sometimes I guess I don't I'm not direct enough. Let's so let's do this. Here are some ways that people secure their emotional perimeter. Some people decide that they're not going to tell anybody anything. You've probably known people who do that. Maybe some of you have done it yourself. I'm not telling nobody about myself because when once you start telling people about yourself or whatever, they they use it against you. They throw it back in your face and they try to block your blessings. So whenever good things happen around me, I mean, whenever good things are happening for me, I keep it to myself. I'm going to keep everything to myself. I'm not telling nobody nothing. They're going to mess up my health. They're going to mess up my wealth. They're going to mess it up for me. And I'm not going to let you do it to me again. See? So that's one of the ways that people secure their emotional perimeter. The other way is what we were talking about before by um, by um, eliminating people that they uh, eliminating people out of their lives who they don't like. They don't like how they act. They don't like what they say. They don't like how they think. Let me get all of y'all out of my way, out of my space. I don't want to hear nothing y'all got to say. I don't want to see nothing that y'all are doing. It's all negative. It's all negative. It's all negative. Y'all toxic, 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 toxic. Y'all toxic, 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 toxic. Y'all toxic, toxic, toxic. Another way that people secure their emotional perimeter is that they decide that they will never fall in love. I will never, 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 never fall in love. I will never, never, never fall in love. I fell love before. Never fall in love again. Yo, y'all, I'm gonna keep you at the friend level. We can have sex. We can even protect ourselves and go raw, but you saw that I will never fall in love again. You will never reach above the level of friend. I don't trust you or nobody who looks like you because I know how you do. Everybody is out for self and even me, but I'm not going to look at it that way. See, I have gotten right to an age where I have to be ready to turn the page that I, uh, I'm never going to fall in love again. Love don't exist and love again. I will never, never fall in love again. Love don't exist. Uh, never love again. That's one of the ways that people secure their emotional perimeter. Another way that people secure their emotional perimeter is they decide that they're never going to let anybody get close to them. Now, I don't want to get close to people. 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 I got close to my friends and they did me wrong. I got close to my people and they couldn't get along. I got close to people and they died out of my life. I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. You know. Um, yeah. You know, um, losing people out of your life, whether you've lost them through separation or whether you've lost them through death. Everyone deals with with death differently. And for some people, we can accept that it's part of life that none of us can avoid. And for other people, we just can't seem to get a grasp or a hold on exactly why it seems to come to those who don't deserve it. Like it's hard for some people not to look at death as a punishment. A punishment to the living. You understand what I'm talking about? It's hard for some people to look at death as not being a punishment to the living. Why did you have to take my love away? Why did you take my mama, my daddy, my loves away? 
Why did you take my baby away, my friends away, the people that I grew up and came up all away? You took them away. And the pain is, is, is too bearable for some people. So they might secure their emotional perimeter by not getting close to people. Or let's say if you work in the in the health in the health industry, you know, you're a nurse or a doctor or something like that. You might choose to lose the, to, to leave that profession. Like, you know what? I, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with people dying all the time. You know what I mean? I, I can't deal with the emotional toll that it takes on me. When I get close, it seems like when I get close to people, then, you know, they get sick or they die or I always meet them when they're at the crossroads of their lives or whatever. So, you know, so that might be that that's one way that people might secure their emotional perimeter. And those are some things that we might all of the things that I'm talking about might be some of the things that we do for certain situations, dealing with certain people. At certain times. But I wanted to get to. I wanted to get. Straight to the bag. Of what we mean. By securing your emotional perimeter. I know that we all know somebody. Who claims that they're never going to fall in love again. Or they're never going to. They're never going to get hurt again. Or they're never going to. Put themselves out there for, for, for people again. I'm never going to invest my, myself. Out there. For people again. I'm never doing it again. I'm never going to put myself out there again. All, I want, all I've ever tried to do is help people. All I've ever tried to do is be there for people. And everybody is giving me their ass to kiss. But it's over now. From now on, nobody is going to hurt me. Because I'm never going to put myself in position to be hurt. And that's somebody who is trying to secure their emotional perimeter. And I ain't mad at him for it. I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him for it. Um, the way that you secure your emotional perimeter is your that's 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 for you. Speaking of that being just for you, you know how we we use that old cliche about you know what's for you is for you and what's not for you is not for you it's easy to it's that's easy for us to say it's easy for us to say to each other say about each other but it's not the easiest way to live your life it's not the easiest way to live your life like accepting that something that you have worked for stro strove for even paid for is not going to it's not going to materialize for you it ain't easy that ain't easy like man i done trained hard for this you know have you ever been in the competition have you ever been in the competition where you really trained hard for something, you really studied your opponent, and you were ready to go, and when the day came for you to compete, you had to deal with a forfeiture. Something messed up the whole thing. It's demoralizing. Because maybe you don't have what it takes to, to start that process all over again to prepare yourself. So you might be like, man, I'm, I'm through. I'm through with this. That might be a way that you are securing your emotional perimeter. Like, this is taking too much out of me. Making sure that you are not weak in certain areas might be a way that you secure your emotional perimeter. Building yourself up, training, educating yourself. Education might be a good way to secure your emotional perimeter. Mm. 
You know, it might be. Might want to take a look at it. Securing your emotional perimeter. Please make sure y'all hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you know what I mean? If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Don't front on the channel. Just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Securing your emotional perimeter. Keeping people from around you. Uh, keeping people from being able to come around you that you think will put you in harm's way. Like I told y'all last night, man, you know, life ain't like the Lion King. You know how Scar was surrounding himself with all those hyenas against everybody's better judgment. Out in the wild, you ain't going to never see that. You will, you will never, ever, 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 ever see a lion kick it with a hyena. Never, ever, 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 ever. Not one-on-one. Not ever, not possible. They are mortal enemies and they don't play about that. So a lion is always going to try to eat a hyena. And I don't even think that they really like the taste of them. They'll eat them if they're available. Like, all right, I think a hyena for a lion is more like, probably more like liver like i don't really like no liver i can eat it but you know, I, don't, I don't like i don't like eating no liver but sometimes i gotta eat liver because that's all that's available i think that's how it goes when it comes to a lion and 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 a hyena and you know how like some people like liver and you know there might be lions out there like shit shit i eat a i eat a hyena anytime i give me y'all just don't know how to cook it you know like liver you know how people who like liver, they'd be like, man, you just don't know how to cook it. Oh, shit, I fucked some liver up. I wish I had, I wish I had me some liver right now. Some, you know, some gravy, some onions, and green peppers, and shit, and mushroom. <laughs> is, is hyena the liver for lions? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Um, Nora says, I know a sister that is a formal, a former, a former hospice nurse. And Nora also says, putting on my emotional oxygen mask first keeps me focused. I hear that. Nora, Nora says, another George Clinton quote. If you got, if you got eyes, prophesize. That's what's up. TK Wright says lies. You talk about that liver? I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, like the, the point is, out in the wild, you won't see lions kicking it with hyenas. You're not going to see. Not in the wild. You know, we make a lot of things happen in captivity that would never happen out in the lot and in, in, in the wild, like lions and tigers being in the same. Lions and tigers are not in the same habitat, and ain't no lion going to tra travel to Siberia or whatever just to kick it with a with a um with with because he heard. Cause he heard tigers was up out there doing their thing. Like, yo, you know what I mean? Tiger up there talking about he bigger than me, he's stronger than me, he could beat me. I mean, how you gonna beat me? He talking about he could whoop me. He can't whoop me. I'm going my way to Siberia. I know as far as hell. I'm going. I'm going there though. Never, never in the wild will you see it. So just like the Lion King, you will never see. You will never see a a young lion. Kicking it with a with a warthog and a and a um, meerkat, not gonna happen. Warthogs and meerkats are dinner. There was a food, no way around it. Lions and high uh, hyenas, not friends. Mortal enemies. Sometimes food, but definitely, definitely foes. You can be food or foe. That's it though. Food or foe. I might eat you, but one thing is for sure. If you come around minding my business, I'm going to kill you. Okay. Okay. So, 
I was saying all that to say that you you may secure your emotional perimeter by making sure that you don't have people around you that you know will hurt you. It's hard to get comfortable. It's hard to get comfortable. It's impossible to get comfortable when you know that you are around people who mean you no good. Actively. Like, like they ain't even pretending like they, they want nothing good for you. They, they letting you know straight from the gate. I don't mess with you like that. And as soon as I get a chance to get my hands around your neck, I'm going to squeeze. Because we're we going now up, never, never down, down, and up, never, up, up, never, never down, down. Oh, yeah, 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 to protect my emotional perimeter. You wrote parameter. That ain't the word. That ain't the word. It's all good. I know what you mean. It's all good. Yeah. We read that again. Once I've been hurt, I become distant in order to protect my emotional perimeter. And she also says it's one of... If it's one of my kids, I become politely distant because I always pray that I'll that it'll get better. But until then, distance. That's heavy. That's heavy. Yeah. When you have to distance yourself from from people that you actually do love and that you do care about. But sometimes the people that we love and that we care about are are hell bent on doing the things that make us think that they don't love us or care about us and that they don't really mean us any well. They don't mean us no good. So we might have to, have to distance ourselves from them. We might have got, we might got to get them out the way. Stacey White says, my circle is very small. Small as a nucleus, small as a cell wall, small as a nucleus, small as a cell wall. You know what cell wall is for a plant and a cell nucleus is something for an ant. Well, I guess an ant is an animal. You could call it a creature. We talking about the difference between the words, but the features are... Pretty much the same. A cell is a cell, but one has a wall, one has a nucleus, and I can tell that they are both living things. Queens and kings, the way you look at those things is different from me and mine, but the sun always shines, and I'm trying to make sure I get ahead, not behind. And But if I have to be behind, I'm looking at everything that's in front of me, and I'm going to be what I want to be. And we take it there, right there. I'm here for y'all and I care. TK Wright says, same Stacy is better that way. Keep your circle small. You ever hear anybody say that they circle was small and is really big compared to other people's circle? I'd be like, man, you, 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 your handwriting real big. That ain't no small circle. That's a big circle. Everything big. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something, man. I was going to go live and talk about this. You know, this scamming thing. You know, people having their having their their social media um, social media accounts hacked and all of that shit. It's happening so often now. Dealing with that, you know, because they they they're preying on people's greed. With that that cash app shit, yo man, you know like how would you like to have five thousand dollars deposited in your cash app? Five five thousand deposited in your cash app. They are getting people with that so much. So when you when you accept a follow or a friend from a lot of these people out here, a lot of these scammers out here, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to get in your inbox and they're going to ask, "Hey, how you doing?" Like if you're a male. It's going to be some good look or a woman that they think is good looking to you 
you know, acting like they trying to come on to you. Hi, how are you? How are you? They're always going to ask where you're from. Like it don't say that shit on your profile. And that's kind of how you know that. But anyway, some people ain't going to pay attention. The catfishing thing is crazy. Uh, but I need to speed this up. What, what I want to tell you, I'm going to make a long story short. So, you know, this, this chick got in my inbox. Well, it was, it's really a man. I, and I know it is. So they got in my inbox. They like, hello. I'm like, hi. They like, how are you? I'm like, good. How are you? They like, good. They like, you know, where are you from? Are you single? Blah, 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 blah. And, um, so I said, you know, my first thing is, look, look, I know what you're trying to do. So they'd be like, you know, if, so they, they'll ask you something like, if, you know, if you had some extra money right now, like maybe, you know, $1,500, $2,000, you know, what would you do with it? And the other day I said, mm, I would send it back. If somebody put, put $5,000 in my cash app, I would send it back. And they were like, why? I said, because I'm already rich. I don't need that money. I'm wealthy. And they were like, yeah, but you know, couldn't you, everybody use some extra money? I said, nah, I said, nah, I'm good. But, um, I said, what, what I, what I would like to do is like, let, let's video chat. And they're never going to video chat with you because they're not the person who ever, who, who's on that profile. So they're always going to, you know, so I, I started getting funny with them too. I said, I said, let's video chat or either that or send me a picture of your titties. Let me see your titties. <laughs> and they're going to say, no, I think, I think the boy says something like, ask your mama, can you see her titties? I said, I already saw my mom titties. I want to see yours. Like, come on, video chat with me. Like you already all up on me. Anyway, that's how you get rid of the scammers. That's how you know what it is. The first, don't, don't, don't go back and forth with them. Ask them to video chat. Because what they're going to do is they're going to lie and, and say that they can't, the camera on their phone is broke or their internet is messed up. They're going to they're gonna try to find some way not to have to video chat with you. And that's because whoever is on that on that profile is not them. It's not them. Anyway. It's not them. Let's get to these birthday shout outs, shall we? Let's get to these birthday shots, shout outs, shall we? We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them, making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box, my man, Denny Live. Comedy brother in arms, my man Denny Live turning 54 years old today. And also Shayna D. Cardi turning 39 years old today. And Aisha Selden, happy birthday to you. And Bernadette Perkins turning 31 years old today. Happy birthday to you. And Chantel Rumble, happy birthday to you. And Dios Marie de la Rosa, happy birthday to you. And Brenda Luis turning 50 years old today. And last but not least, last but not least, my girl Wanda Clemens. Turning 57 years old today. I want to say happy birthday to all y'all. All y'all. And anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious May 5th. Anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up. Turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. I rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to, uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and remember, man, listen. You have to secure your emotional perimeter the best way that you can secure your emotional perimeter. 
You know what I mean? And whatever it takes to make you feel good, as long as it's legal, as long as it's decent, as long as, as, as it's steeped in good forethought. Hey, if it works for you, that's what you need to do. Nobody can tell you how to protect yourself against what hurts you. Because what hurts you is not the same thing that hurts everybody else. We all have different perspectives. We've all been trained differently. We've all been different in the way that we have perceived certain things that have happened to us and happened around the world. So whatever, whatever predators try to enter your circle, you have the right to keep them up out of there. Get out of here. You go. Bad. Bad. And I support that. Peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. Resuscitate y'all. Love y'all right back to life. We will be back tomorrow night. I'm sorry. We will be back tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. for another Urban Therapy with Sun Show. So make sure y'all come through. Please, uh, please. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, so, 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 so. You make me so, 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 so. Blog Talk, we gonna get you out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace, y'all. Thanks, y'all. Thank y'all for coming through. Much, much love. One love. Peace.